so because the blue light is being scattered in the sky yes it is because the uh, violet color is scattered the most or you can say that the scattering of light is inversely proportional to the wavelength so violet color is the one which is scattered the most but since the violet color is not perceptible to our eyes as much as the blue color so therefore we observe the color of the sky to be blue today we will observe we will see the color of sun we will see the color of sun during sunrise and sunset okay then we will also observe the twinkling of the stars i told you why the stars twinkle so we will observe here the twinkling of stars so why do stars twinkle In the last class, I had told you that the twinkling of the stars. So, I told you what does actually twinkling means. Twinkling means sometimes increase in the brightness of the stars and then decrease in the brightness. This effect we call as the twinkling of the stars. So, these are the two phenomena which we need to do today. Today and with this, we, this chapter will be over. So, once this chapter is over, we will do some questions from both of these chapters. Okay. So, color of sun during sunrise and sunset. So, See how does the color of the sun changes? The sun that we observe at every time, the same, the sun during the morning time is red in color as the day approaches, as the day begins. So the slowly and slowly the color of the sun changes and it becomes a brilliant white during the afternoon. During the evening time, again, its, its color starts changing and at the late evening, it again becomes oranges and then finally becomes red. Okay. We'll also observe the phenomena of advanced sunrise and delayed sunset. What is advanced sunrise and what is delayed sunset? So I hope everyone, all of you just, uh, can you keep your camera on? I can't see anyone. So to understand the color of the sun during sunrise and sunset, okay, here we have our earth and let's take our sun. So see what happens during the sunrise and sunset. So as you know, the sun is very far off and sunrise and sunset is taken as the time of horizon. So if this is your horizon and we have our Earth's atmosphere, so we'll also take the Earth's atmosphere into consideration. So see, this is our Earth's atmosphere. Now, during the morning time, during the morning time, the sun light has to travel this much of distance. See, the distance from A to P. A, P is the distance that the light has to travel through the Earth's atmosphere. And as the, as the day begins, so you have, as the day begins, the sun starts overhead. The sun, when the sun comes overhead, so now the sunlight has to travel smaller distances. When the sun has is overhead, so you can see now the sun has to the sunlight has to travel a smaller distance BP. Out of AP and BP, BP is a smaller distance and AP is a greater distance. Right? So during the morning time, this is the morning time when we observe when we observe the uh, sun to be here. So during the morning time, sunlight is traveling a greater distance through the Earth's atmosphere. But during the noon time, the sunlight has to travel shorter distances through the Earth's atmosphere. So 
the scattering of light is too much during the morning but during the afternoon the scattering of light is not that much as it was achieved during the morning time so the reason is the light has traveled a larger distance during the morning but during the afternoon the light has to travel shorter distances through the earth's atmosphere and even when the sun is at overhead let's say this one so when you observe the sun overhead over here so the light has to travel still shorter distances see the sunlight now has to travel still a shorter distance cp it's a still small distance now so why the color of the sun is red during sunrise and sunset the reason being during sunrise and sunset during sunrise and sunset sunlight has to travel sunlight sunlight has to travel larger distances to the earth's atmosphere and evening so a lot of scattering of light occurs a lot of scattering of light occurs during morning and evening and hence all the colors of light since out of the seven colors of light all the colors get scattered and the scattering is minimum for the red color the red color scattered the least therefore only red color reaches our eye so here we have only red color reaches eyes so as it rises up slowly and slowly all the colors start approaching our eyes as we have all the other colors approaching our eyes we observe the color of the sun we observe the color of the sun to be white what it understood the color of the sun why do we have the color of sun as red during the morning and evening and brilliant white during the afternoon yes siddharth siddharth have you understood yes sir okay driti driti what about you yes sir okay driti kashvi uh, yes. and so can you explain it again yes okay. See, from the from the sun we have different colors of light from the sun we have red color also approaching we have green color also approaching we have blue color also approaching towards us we have yellow color also approaching towards us but when all the colors enter during the earth's atmosphere so here yellow color gets scattered up here the blue color gets scattered up into into the earth's atmosphere the green color also gets scattered up so this blue color scatters up in the atmosphere this green color also scatters in the atmosphere but since the scattering is minimum for the red color so the red color reaches our eyes or it is only the red color which is able to reach our eyes therefore we observe the color of the sun to be red in color whereas during the afternoon during the afternoon the light has to travel smaller distances during the afternoon light has to travel smaller distances so therefore scattering of the light is less scattering of light is less during the afternoon got it yes okay yes. now the next stage yes the next stage advanced sunrise and delayed sunset so some questions are asked every uh, every time from this concept so what is advanced sunrise and delayed sunset
<laughs> See, when uh, when should we uh, when we observe the sun? Suppose you have your earth over here, and uh, let's say the atmosphere is also present. We have our earth's atmosphere around the earth. Let's say this is our earth's atmosphere. Now, so let's see when do we say sunrise and sunset. So to observe sunrise and sunset, when the sun crosses the horizon, So this is a line which is our horizon. If I'm standing over here, I, I stand at this point, I stand over here. So I will be able to observe the sun when the sun crosses this horizon. Am I correct? When the sun will cross this horizon. So that is the time I will be able to observe the sun. And if the sun comes below this horizon, so the sun will not be observable to me. Okay. Everyone agrees this point? Where? Yes. When do you observe sunrise and sunset? When the sun crosses the horizon, when it comes up the horizon, you say it's sunrise. When it goes below the horizon, you say it's sunset. All right. So, yes, Moksha. Moksha, are you lost somewhere? Uh, do not keep this no, uh, position of your hand. Okay. So see what happens. What? Why do we say it's an advanced sunrise? Actually, when the sun should reach this point, that is the time we will we should observe the sun but in reality even when the sun is below the horizon here we have the sun below the horizon so see what happens when the sunlight enters the earth's atmosphere so here it's the sunlight entering the earth's atmosphere now do you think the sunlight will go straight when it enters the earth's atmosphere Will the sunlight go straight when it enters the Earth's atmosphere, or should there be any refraction? Yes, sir, should uh, there should be any a refraction? Yeah, there should be a refraction of light when the sunlight enters from the outer. Uh, what do we call a uh, outer space into the Earth's atmosphere? Since the density of the atmosphere is higher than the outer space. So light is entering from a rarer medium to a denser medium. Okay. So at this point, at this point, if I draw the normal, so let us see, I'm constructing the normal. So normal is always perpendicular to the surface. So this line with this blue line, which I'm drawing, it is the normal to the surface. And in which direction should the ray of light bend now? So, this is the ray of light which was coming from sun. It was supposed to go straight. Now, it is entering from a rarer medium to a denser medium. So, should it bend below or should it go above? Yes? Where should the ray of light go? Should it go like this or should it go below? Below. Below. below? below. Since it should be bending towards the normal. So this ray of light bends towards the normal and reaches the observer. So see, the ray of light here, it reaches the observer even when the sun is not at the horizon. See, the sun is actually not at the horizon. The sun is below the horizon. The sun is below the horizon, 
still you have the sunlight, still the sunlight is reaching my eyes. So if sunlight reaches my eyes, will I be able to see the sun? Yes? Yes, sir. Yes or no? Yes. So I will be able to see the sun and I will observe the sun to be in the straight line only. It will appear to me that the sun is here. So this position is the actual position of sun. And this is the apparent position. So this one is the actual position of the sun. This one is the apparent position of the sun. Now, even when the sun is below the horizon, I am able to observe the sun at the horizon. Okay. So it will appear to me that sunrise has occurred, whereas actually the sunrise has not occurred. Got it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, can I say to it to be an advanced sunrise when the sunrise has not actually occurred, but I can see the sun? That means when we observe the sunrise, at that time, sunrise has actually not occurred. Actually, the sun has not come above the horizon, but we are able to observe the sun above the horizon. Got it? Yes. Yes. So this position we call as advanced sunrise. We have here advanced sunrise. Okay. The same situation happens during the sunrise. So how much time actually it takes for the sun to come from this this position to the apparent position, it has been calculated to be approximately two minutes. It takes for the sun approximately two minutes to have the actual sunrise. Got it? To have actual sunrise or to uh, sun to have come to actually horizon, it takes two minutes. Now, the similar thing happens during sunset also. Okay, So, see how it happens during this sunset. So, see, again, uh, when the sun goes below the horizon. So, when the sun has gone below the horizon, where it should not be actually visible to me, but again, Due to the same phenomena, due to the similar refraction occurring during the uh, sunset. So during the sunset, again, due to refraction, I will be able to observe the sun even two minutes later when the actual sunrise has occurred. So when the sun was actually at this position, when the sun was actually at this position, that was the time that sunset had sunset had occurred, but even after sunset, even after sunset has occurred, sun has gone below the horizon. That is the time I can I can still observe the sun. Okay. So here also it takes it takes approximately two minutes time. So this we call as the delayed sunset. Okay, anyone having any doubt from the advanced sunrise and delayed sunset? Got it?
Any doubts in the any doubts in these points? Advanced sunrise and delayed sunset. Sir, did this question come in the boards any time? Yeah. Like usually for how many marks does it come for? Uh, it may come uh, maybe in the form of MCQ. What is the phenomena responsible for advanced sunrise and advanced sunset, delayed sunset? So which phenomena is responsible? Atmospheric refraction. Yes, atmospheric refraction. Got it? It can come even for two marks, three marks as an explanation. Okay. Now let's see the next. Uh, the next thing is twinkling of stars. So again, this is also an important aspect of twinkling of stars. Sir, could you show so, the previous page, sir? Yeah, what happened? Sir, could you show the previous page, sir? Yes. So complete it, sir. Okay. So this is twinkling of stars. So what do we call as twinkling of the stars? The change in, what do we call twinkling? Twinkling is change in brightness of stars. Or we can say, stars appear to flicker okay. so this phenomena we call as the twinkling of the stars and this only happens with the stars not with the planets that means you cannot observe the twinkling of uh, different planets even the planets are also far off they also shine but you cannot observe twinkling effect in the case of planets. Twinkling is observed for the stars only. So let us see why we observe twinkling of stars and not the twinkling of planets. Again, here also, the role is for our atmosphere. Our atmosphere plays an important role in the twinkling of the stars. Okay. So, uh, as you can see, we have taken here our Earth and the Earth atmosphere. Let us take a, some star which is very far off. So, we take here a star which is far off. Even the star which is nearest to nearest to sun, it takes a few light years. It's about 3.5 light years. So, it takes about 3.5 years for the light to come from that star towards the Earth. Okay, or towards the sun. So even the nearest star is very far off. Whereas planets are close as compared with the stars. Now see what happens. Whatever light of the star, it comes to our Earth's atmosphere. The light enters the Earth's atmosphere and due to varying intensity of the light during due to the varying density of the atmosphere. Our density of our Earth's atmosphere, it keeps on changing. As you know, continuous, our atmosphere is very thick. 
कि our atmosphere is very thick, so the layers of atmosphere wherever air and different components we have. the density of the earth's atmosphere keeps on changing when the density of the earth's atmosphere keeps on changing so light suffers multiple refractions before reaching our eyes so when any star's light it travels and reaches our eyes it suffers a number of refractions before reaching our eyes Yeah, Horia, good evening. Is there any doubt that you have? Okay, Horia, no issues. You can access the, uh, the video recording of this class. Okay, maybe by tomorrow the video recording will be available. So here, see, the light of the star it comes through a number of refractions. Why a number of refractions are there? Because of the varying intensity of the atmosphere, varying density of the atmosphere. The density of the Earth's atmosphere keeps on changing. It's not a fixed density. So somewhere it's high, somewhere it's low. It, it keeps on varying. And therefore, the light which reaches our eyes, it comes through multiple refractions. Okay. So once the light reaches our eyes, we are able to see the star. We are able to see the star once its light reaches our eyes. Then uh, again, the density of the atmosphere changes and the light which was reaching our eyes is not, is not able to reach our eyes. Now it reaches somewhere else. It doesn't reach our eyes. So if the light does not reach our eyes, we will not be able to observe the star. So why do we observe the twinkling of the stars? The twinkling of the stars is observable. It is because of due to the varying density of the light or due to the varying density of the Earth's atmosphere. of Earth's atmosphere. So due to the varying density of the Earth's atmosphere. Due to varying density of Earth's atmosphere, sometimes sunlight, so not sunlight, some, sometimes light from stars reaches our eyes and sometimes it is not able to reach. It doesn't. Okay. So therefore, stars appear to flicker. So why do stars appear to flicker or why do we observe twinkling of the stars? The reason being due to the varying density of the Earth's atmosphere, sometimes the star's light reaches our eyes and sometimes it is not able to reach our eyes. But then why don't planets twinkle? Can anyone answer? Why don't planets twinkle? Planets don't give out light. Uh, so, uh, what difference will it create if they don't give out light? Yes. See, planets are very close. Planets are very close as compared with stars. Hence, they act as 
extended sources of light. I'll, I'll tell you what are extended sources of light. So planets are very close as compared with the stars and they act as extended sources of light. So planets, they act as extended source of light. They are not uh, point sources. The stars, they are the point sources of light. When I say point sources, they are very far off. So the stars, they are very far off and they extend or they look as a extended uh, point source of light. Whereas Okay, so see, this is how it happens. Extended sources. So what do you mean by extended sources? And point sources? Okay. Okay. See, for the extended sources and point sources, when I talk of point sources, Point sources are very small and they the light which comes from them, it is very small. So whatever light comes from the sun or whatever light comes from the star, the amount of light that comes from the star is very less. And the amount of light which comes from the planets, since the planets are very close. Now let's see. The planets are very close to the earth. Now from them, a lot of light enters the earth's atmosphere. So here also we observe, here also multiple refractions occur. But the, since they are emitting a lot of light, a large amount of light is coming from them. So due to this large amount of light, the variations of light, they are not observable. If some amount of light uh, uh, comes and some amount of light doesn't come, so we are not able to observe the variation in the amount of light. Got it? Planet is very close, so it is good. It is giving you a lot of light. A beam of light is coming from it. Okay. So if sometimes some some amount of light doesn't come to you, it is not observable. Whereas since the stars are very far off, and very small amount of light is coming from them, the brightness of the light which is coming from the stars it's very less. Okay. So. If sometimes there is a change in the amount of light that is entering our eyes, so it is observable and hence we can say the stars will appear to flicker. Got these two points? Here we are explaining why stars twinkle and why planets do not twinkle. So Sumuk. Can you explain the twinkling of stars? Why do stars twinkle? Which phenomena is responsible for the twinkling of the stars? So, Sumuk, are you there? Meher? Yes, sir. Okay. So, Mayor, can you explain the twinkling of the stars? Sir, can okay, Shubhansh. Shubhansh. Yes. yes, sir. Okay. Can you explain the twinkling of stars? Sir, can you repeat? Uh, can you tell why the stars twinkle and planets do not twinkle? Uh, sir, due to atmospheric refraction. So, due to atmospheric refraction, there is twinkling. But why do stars twinkle and planets do not? Sir, it's because, sir, because planets are clo closer to the Earth, whereas stars are very far. Okay, so what happens because of that? When an object is closer, the atmosphere, like 
the deflection is like very see hello see i talked of here two words i talk i call this one to be a point source of light so this is a point source of light whereas a planet is an extended source of light the size of the stars that appears is very small so they are point sources of light and hence very small amount of light comes from them. got it anyone having any doubts from these topics whatever we discussed today no sir. so finally in the next class we'll be discussing everything that we have covered in this chapter this chapter is complete we'll be discussing everything we'll also discuss the questions which can be asked from this chapter okay okay so bye all of you see all of you again and do join the class on time okay bye all of you thank you sir thank you sir bye sir